cortege carrying the bodies of British soldiers killed in Afghanistan makes its way through the town of Wootton Bassett. It happens about once a week and it can happen at any time. And every time it happens, they are there. This is how a small English town pays tribute to those who die in service to their country. A mum has lost a son. A dad has lost a son. He won't be able to go to the football match on a Saturday with that son. It makes me so sad. Oh, hello, this is Michelle from the Wootton Bassett Town Council. Hello, we've just been advised by Lynham of the next repatriation. It'll be Monday at approximately 1.30. Right, okay then, bye. Hello, oh yes, sir. Just a moment, I'll get a pen and paper. Hello, Mr. Sproy. Chris, Chris Wanoff from Wooten Bassett. To let Robert know there is a repatriation Hello, Julie. to Wooten Bassett. Uh, it's Pat here. Monday. Could you tell Malcolm? Hello, Where's Bob. Ken. Ken here. Bob, we've got a repatriation on Monday. Yeah, 1.30. 1.30 in Wooten Bassett. When they decided in April 2007 to repatriate all British servicemen through RAF linemen. Our mayor attended every one of those repats and we joined him there. Uh, we had a phone call from uh, the town council to say Lynham had uh, alerted them to the coffins coming through. Uh, and I went up and got my robes and all that on and Sal was dressed. Uh, we were the only two at the, the memorial and then people gradually came, didn't they? Uh, it was so moving, it just wasn't true. I think it was four bodies that came through at that time, and uh, there was one spare car at the back in case one broke down. And uh, that's how it started. I've become increasingly aware of just how much media attention that surrounds it. Well, you see it on Points West quite often, and yeah. that's only the local news, but occasionally it gets on the national news. And I think it's almost a worldwide thing because you were saying that the New York Times referred to us as the funeral parlour of Britain. Which I don't agree think with. think it's a very positive, it's not a very positive. No, we're not a funeral parlour, we're just showing our respect. Yeah. We're not, it, but, just, it makes it sound quite morbid, but we're not, yeah. we're just trying to show the way we feel. It's too not on the summer fight, you know, well, it's all you. It is a very British town. I hes hesitate to use the word English, um, although some would call it so. Um, but it, it is very proud of its traditions. Many of the, what you might call the old village uh, pastimes are still carried on in Wootton Bassett. The town has a huge number of uh, societies and groups and associations, uh, lots of interconnecting web, webs of, uh, of people knowing each other from this group or that group. A very strong sense of fair play the town sports clubs are always very well uh, attended. It's a great place to live and bring up a family. This, this year, 2009, will be my 37th year that I've been doing this. So I don't know how many thousands of poppies I've done in that course of time, but I do somewhere in the region of 2,000 a year. And Ray is something like uh, 3,000 pounds for the benefit and the service of uh, ex-military personnel. These petals I salvage from the rears after they've been taken off the cenotaph. 
and then I strip this poppy, which is sent to us. Then I put an extra petal on there, or an extra two. And this, I feel, enhances that poppy. And so, perhaps, encourage someone for a larger donation. Details and coincidence are a part of this story like the plan to do something about the town's main road. The repatriations, I suppose one could say, they, they come through Wootton Bassett and have grown to be what they are through a whole series of, of accidents. Firstly, if... ...the high street, if we'd had the bypass built, and the, the bypass was planned for several years, but could never be afforded. They, they never slacken off. You know, every, every repatriation, even if it's absolutely pouring down, the people of Wootton Bass are out there. It's not just the British Legion and the, and the mayors and the council. It's mums and dads. It's just shoppers. They're standing to attention from absolute silence, apart from that one church bell from St. Bart's Church. It makes you feel hugely proud to be part of this community in Wiltshire. It makes you feel hugely proud of the British nation. Oh, oh. When it rains, we try to find them umbrellas to give them shelter in the shop. And when it's sunny, they buy plenty of water from us and we help them at what, what we can. We shut the shop as it comes through ourselves. And me and the girls go out to wash it. We hear the bell towing and we shut the shop. Um, well, we keep a lookout because obviously the traffic stops and then we know it's coming through. and then just come back inside when it's all dispersed. Um, but normally the clients are quite happy for us to leave them and they'll even come out sometimes with us. It brings it to home how many are actually dying because before they come through here we didn't really know. If you didn't watch the news or read the newspapers you didn't really know. So it does bring it home how many people are actually dying. So yeah, it does, you know, it does make you despise them all a little bit more, I suppose. My husband is a serving member of the RAF and spends quite a lot of time out in Afghanistan. So that always makes it difficult when the funeral cortages come past and the repatriation ceremonies, because we do stand out and um, pay our respects. And of course, my thoughts are always with 